Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an equation for integers. We have x plus 1 over the quantity y plus 1 over z is equal to 30 over 13 and x, y and z are integers. So we're going to look for integer solutions. Let me go ahead and write that down to make it more clear. Okay, now how do we solve these kinds of equations? Obviously there is more than one way to do it and depending on how long this takes I might just talk about alternatives uh, you know, different ways of looking at this equation. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to take 30 over 13 and break it down. Now notice that on the left hand side we have x plus 1 over something, so we have an integer plus 1 over something. Obviously 1 over something is going to be like a fraction, y plus 1 over z is also an integer plus a fraction, like for example 5 plus 1, 1 third, or something like that. So we kind of need to break down our number on the right hand side. That's my first idea, 30 over 30. Now how do you break it down? Well, I will just divide 30 by 13 and as you know, uh, if you divide 30 by 13, you're going to get 2, but you're also going to be getting a remainder, right? And that remainder is going to be coming from 30 minus 26, which is going to be 4, of course. So it's going to be written as 2 plus 4 over 13. And you can always check that because if you make a common denominator, you're going to notice that this is 2 times 13 plus 4, which is 30, and the same denominator applies. Okay, so this kind of gave us an idea about what, you know, the left-hand side should look like, but we're kind of approaching a point. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. So notice that x could be a 2, but we have a problem with the 1 here. So how am I going to deal with 1? Because I have a 4 here, I don't have a 1. But we can still take care of that. Now, you might be thinking at this point, why don't we just uh, divide by 4, right? Uh, that might be a good idea, uh, because then we'll have a 1 and we can kind of compare. But I'm going to be using a slightly different approach. Okay, let's see what happens. So I'll take this 4 over 13, and since I have a 1 here, that indicates the reciprocal of something. So I'm assuming that 4 thirteenth is the reciprocal of something. And can I answer that question? 4 thirteenth is the reciprocal of 4 over 13 is the reciprocal of what number? And the answer is 13 over 4, obviously, right? Well, hopefully it's obvious by now. Well, 13 over 4 is supposed to be the denominator here. But notice that y plus 1 over z is an integer plus 1 over an integer. 1 over an integer is like something like 1 tenth, 1 fifteenth, whatever. And w when we add the integer, obviously we're going to get a, a non-integer. And 13 fourths is not an integer. So what we're going to do next is just break down the 13 fourths. And I can write it as, what can I write it as? 2 plus 1 over, now if you divide 13 by 4, you should be getting 3, right? 3. And the remainder is 1 because 3 times 4 equals 12, so we can write it as 3 plus 1 fourth. Now at this point, I would like to go ahead and set this equal to my original expression and just go from there. So in this case, I would be getting something like x plus, x plus 1 over, 1 over y plus 1 over z. Great. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, I do have uh, 2 on the left hand side and x on the right hand side. So I can safely say that, well, x is supposed to be a 2 here, or at least we can safely say that x can be 2, right? It's going to work. x equals 2 is going to work by comparing these two numbers. And then by comparing y with the 3, I can safely say that y is equal to 3, right? And then looking at the 4 here and the z here, I can also say that z is equal to 4. So that basically gives us the triple, the order triple of solutions, which is x comma y comma z, 2, 3, 4. Okay, great. It's not as easy as 1, 2, 3, but it's at least as easy as 2, 3, 4. So this is my first approach. And let me go ahead and explain another method to approach this problem. And I'll, I'm hoping that if you have any alternatives, please, you know, uh, write them down in the comment section. So. I'm going to start with my equation again, x plus, let's go ahead and rewrite it, x plus 1 over y plus 1 over z, right? That's my equation. And now, I would like to work this out. Instead of working out the right-hand side, as you see here, uh, I would like to just work with this expression. What can I turn it into? Well, obviously, we can make a common denominator in the denominator right here. So we can just make a common denominator. Let's go ahead and do that. It's going to become x plus 
1 over, if you make common denominator, multiply by z, it's going to become yz plus 1 over z. And at this point, sometimes people, well, I, actually, I do that uh, too, because it's, I think, practical. Why don't we just go ahead and use a more, um, you know, radical approach here? Instead of just making a common denominator, why don't we just multiply the top and the bottom by z? It's equivalent to the same thing, but we're just not dealing with denominators here. And that's kind of nice, because this gets us the answer quicker. So it's a nice shortcut. So we, we get z over, if you distribute the z over the y, so it's going to give you zy, Plus when you multiply z by 1 over z, obviously that's going to be 1 because they are reciprocals. Great. And now we're going to make another, another common denominator. And how do we make that one? Well, I can just put a 1 underneath the x and just put it all together. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I have x over 1 plus z over zy plus 1. And at this point, I would like to make a common denominator. So why not multiply both the top and the bottom here by zy plus 1. Let's go ahead and do that. And here, zy plus 1. And what is that going to give me? Let's go ahead and explore. This is kind of fun stuff. Uh, and it's not that complicated, I think. OK, so we're going to be getting x, y, z plus x. Of course, we have a common denominator. So I can just add the numerators here. Basic arithmetic, you know. And then the common denominator is just going to be zy plus 1. Now, at this point, because I got a you know simpler fraction, uh, let's go ahead and set it equal to my expression. And what was that fraction? What was that fraction? I forgot. 30 over 13. Great. OK, so we're going to be setting this equal to 30 over 30. Now, when you see something like this, a fraction equals another one, right? And we're looking for integer solution. What are you thinking? Well, this is what I'm thinking. Why not set the numerator equal to the numerator and the denominator to the denominator, right? That's kind of like automatic, isn't it? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what happens. So I get x, y, z plus x plus z is equal to 30 and zy plus 1 is equal to 13. Obviously, this gives me a system of equations, which is fairly easy to solve, especially because x, y, z are integers. But look at the second equation. It's almost solved, right? If you subtract 1 from both sides, you're going to be getting something like zy is equal to 12. And that's something that can be used. Didn't I tell you about the power of substitution like a zillion times, right? Substitution is so powerful. So why don't we just go ahead and use it? Let's use it. So here, since we have a yz, why don't we replace that yz with 12? So that's going to give us something nice. You'll see now. That's kind of fun. OK, so that's going to give you 12x plus x plus z. Just you know, continue with the first equation is equal to 30. 12x plus x. They're like terms. so I can add them. They like each other. So that gives me 13x plus z is equal to 30. And I have the zy is equal to 12. So I got another system. But notice that this system is a lot easier to solve. So let's go and solve it real quick. So what am I going to do? Well, you know, x needs to be 13. X needs to be a multiple of 13. So if x equals 0, z is going to be 30. But there's no way. Uh, 30 can go into 12. So at the same time, I have to think about a number z that can go into 12. So divisors of 12, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12, right? It can only be one of those numbers for z. So what about what about uh, x equals? So x equals 0 didn't really give us anything good. What about x equals 1? If x equals 1, then I'm going to be getting z equals 17. Again, that's not a good thing, right? If x equals 1, then z equals 17. But you don't want that because 17 doesn't divide 12. OK, great. So now how about x equals 2? Well, if x is equal to 2, then I'm going to be getting z equals 4. And z equals 4 is going to give me y equals 3. And is that going to work? Yes. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.